News, Rio de Janeiro. Well, it's time to have a look through the papers this morning with the theologian Vicky Beeching and the actor Tama Hassan. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Nice morning. to see you on the bright and early on a Sunday Very morning. Very bright and early. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Tama. He's asleep. Come Come on. Away. Wake up. Sunday morning. I call this one the graveyard shift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's kick off, should we, with the, um, the Sunday Telegraph Sport and the Commonwealth Games, Vicky. Yeah, what a fantastic photo. This is uh, one of the many great moments from the Commonwealth Games so far. This is um, English weightlifter Zoe Smith, who uh, broke a Commonwealth record yesterday. Um, she's had an amazing career. She, um, she won a bronze at the Delhi Commonwealth Games when she was just 16 and then broke a British record at London 2012. She's still actually only 20 now. Wow. Is she? And um, this interview is yeah. really fascinating. It talks about her personal journey and um, apparently after Delhi, when she was only 16, her funding was withdrawn because they said she was overweight. And it's a really vulnerable interview actually about how shamed she felt by being called overweight at such a young age when she was you know, just kind of finding herself and quite body conscious. And uh, instead of um, being knocked down by that criticism, she really, um, performed above her sort of age and maturity and really got herself together, uh, lost a lot of weight, got in shape and uh, has become an incredibly inspiring figure, I think, for many people. So uh, she's saying there that uh, if she can do it, anyone can and all you have to do is believe in yourself. A lot of pressure, Tamar, though, isn't there on um, on young people these days? I mean, whether they're, you know, they're, they're athletes or, you know, just, just ordinary people, students or out doing a job, whatever it might be, all this pressure to look right mm -hmm. and be right. That's disgusting. You lost your... Your funding because you was yeah. overweight. Yeah. I mean, I'm a little bit overweight. <laughs> oh, I've got a little bit of timber right. on, but you do, you I do couldn't enough. see anyone losing There's my funding. There's a lot funding. of pressure, isn't it? Especially when you're, there, you know, it was yeah. quite an unexpected success for her. Apparently, when she was 16 at Delhi, and uh, it all sort of came crashing in. You know, the success, and then suddenly the criticism. And it's such a vulnerable she, age, isn't it? When, exactly. when you are really insecure about, yeah. well, you don't know who you are really, and then to be told something like that. And then exactly. she goes and does this. Mm. Yeah, well, great achievement. She says so much about her tenacity. I think she's pulled it round. Good honour. Good honour. To the Sunday Times, there's another picture of her on the front page, actually, Tamit, which is a gr another great shot. Uh, but they're looking at Nick Clegg, um, basically saying Russia should lose the World Cup 2018. Tough one. There is a debate here, I do believe. Um, who do you blame? I've been to Russia. Beautiful, very magical country. Uh, the people are wonderful. I do believe they are capable of hosting a World Cup. Um, but do we bring politics into sport? Mm. I mean, r the Russians are, um, are doing so much for the sport at the moment, you know, buying clubs, spending a lot of money on players, making clubs successful and stuff. But I don't know. It's, it, for me, I think, yes, they should host it, but then... Can you leave politics say, out of sport, though, completely? Yeah, I know that's the ideal, you, yeah, but, but when situations is, present is, differently, don't we have to alter our thinking? This is the problem I have. This is the problem I have. Why bring politics into sport, you know? Wars are going to keep going on. Um, politics are going to keep happening, you know? People are going to disagree and agree with stuff, and then you bring sport into it. Mm. Well, in some ways, sport's actually quite a healing um, element, isn't it? It can actually bring nations together and break down those barriers, but mm. I think my perspective on this story is that actually what Nick Clegg thinks is relatively irrelevant because the only people making the decision will be FIFA and that's really the only decision-making body here. I mean, yes, sure. if lots of people that's boycott it, possibly there could be pressure, but I mean, FIFA have shown themselves not to be particularly ethically conscious anyway, so it doesn't Clegg's really matter what Nick Clegg thinks to some degree. But Clegg's even saying uh, we should pull the uh, Grand Prix from Russia, which I think is going to be in October or something, they were saying, uh, their first Grand Prix, and it's like... OK, you know, there's a disaster, and it's, it's a terrible, terrible disaster that happens, you know. Um, but these, these things are going to keep happening and keep happening. I mean, look, what brings the world together? Football and film, I always say that. Uh -huh. But do you bring politics into film? You don't really no. do you. You know, I got asked a question before because uh, I, I was a patron of Amnesty International, and the question was asked, uh, does film in, uh, influence torture? What came first, torture or film? You know, of course it doesn't. Mm. You know, but it's the same with football. You know, why, why bring football into politics? It's just a, a, a subject that I, I just don't agree with. It's difficult you know? though, because why should difficult. we? Why should we give them that honour? I mean, it's not ours to give; mm. it's FIFA's. But mm. you don't want to reward people that are behaving in this way. Of course so we don't. Of I definitely would rather well, they didn't it have it. But like, you know, yes. FIFA's the only organisation that can really make that decision. So. Um, Hopefully they'll make the right choice. Uh, well, let's turn our attention to um, the small screen, uh, should we, with um, bloggers, video bloggers, um, <laughs> a 
Zoella, who's turned into a bit of a sensation in the Star on Sunday. This is, uh, this is fan fantastic stuff. I think it really shows that um, the internet can give people a voice to create their own channel. It might be threatening, you know, TV in a mainstream sense, um, but this girl, Zoella, is, uh, she's the biggest British vlogger, which is an uh, internet video blogger. Uh, she's got um, over 8 million fans, and she started in 2009. Uh, and some of these young people, she's 24, some of these people are pulling in about um, £20,000 a month in um, advertising, which sounds fairly extraordinary, but that's, that's the sort of average earnings that wow. people like this girl are making. Um, she's living in a luxury penthouse on the seafront in Brighton, paying £2,500 a month in rent and uh, is a real success story well, for this. What is it that makes her so popular? Then? So she started apparently by accident because she was bored. She had a camera and she was filming herself, giving advice <coughs> on beauty, fashion, um, you know, dating, kind of just teenage life. And uh, these uh, kind of young teens are actually spending more time on YouTube than they are on television. So they're more interested to watch somebody like this and then her peers doing these uh, video logs more than they would tune into regular TV. So mm. really this piece is, is pointing out the fact that um, there's a sort of corner of broadcasting in this YouTube pocket that many people under the age of about 30 aren't even aware of. But um, someone like her actually has so much influence, they're comparing her to One Direction in terms of her, oh, wow. her influence. I mean, 8 million fans is not bad. How old um, is she? She's 24. 24. So it's, it's a whole phenomenon, and there's actually mm. management companies managing people like her, um, and she's gone full time. She had an apprenticeship with an interior design company. She gave it up, and, and there's, that's there's, her job now. There's money to be had from advertising yeah. if you can get. Twenty thousand pounds a month. I'm wow. in the yeah. wrong business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Watch out for Tamara's yeah. new yeah. 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 video. I, don't know. I, don't know. I think personally, I think people should stick to watching actual television. What you're <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. You're not biased at all <laughs> about it. <right? laughs> Let's start blogging. Lovely. We're going to take a short break. Back with more for you in just a moment. Dick. So we're looking through the papers with Vicky and Tower. You've picked this one, Tower. Uh, don't kill Sean Bean. Oh yeah, yes. Um, I bet you've been killed in a few. I quite like TV this. series, haven't you? I'd like to have uh, a, a lot of people campaigning for me not to die because I'm a little bit like Sean Bean. I'm either killing or being killed in most of the stuff <laughs> I do. <laughs> but I just thought this was genius. Don't kill Sean Bean. Brilliant. So he's got a new series coming out, Le uh, Legends, isn't it? As I said, whatever you do, just don't kill him off. Just don't kill him off. Just for once. Brilliant. For once, keep him alive. I know Sean, he's a great actor as well. And, uh, Is he a nice fella? Well. Yeah, he's lovely. Cause you, always wonder, you always wonder with these people. He's if very quiet, though. He's very reserved. He's kind of says he? hello. He doesn't give too much away. No. One of them ones, never gives too much away. Oh, you do it. wonder about the bad guys, like it's been so funny to get to know you, because obviously yes, you can yeah. do your scary voice and, you well, know, I'm gonna do other that than that you're like the nicest person ever. That could be the first blogging for me, couldn't it? I could actually <laughs> sell my voice. Yeah, but you're quite <laughs> it is scary. You're yeah. quite posh really. I, last I am, yes, absolutely. <laughs> this whole uh, geezer thing is, is a complete facade. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Tamar's promised me that if anybody gives me any trouble he can do this like I'll anonymous phone call to your voice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll do that. Love it. Tattoo, uh, and I'm going to come and find you. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh. Since chills down his spine. Yes, I need that. <laughs> Honestly, you're, it really does put the shivers down your back. <laughs> Lovely, guys. We'll leave it there, but you're back in an hour. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I look we forward are. to that. Let's get a quick check, though, on the weather for you this morning.